If you like this video, please consider supporting the Otokana channel over on Patreon. Thank you. In this episode, we are taking a close look at the Fuchsite Genuine by Daniel Smith. Fuchsite, the mineral, belongs to the mica family of minerals, and its other name is chrome mica. It apparently glows lime green under long wave UV light, although I don't have a UV light to test this paint with. If you do have a long wave UV light and this color at home, please do test it and let us know in the comments below what you find. Fuchsite Genuine, the paint, is the sparkliest of them all thanks to being a mica. A soft green color, the sparkle is different from the sparkles of the sodalite, kyanite or the amethyst genuine. The latter paints have glitter-like particles in them and you can see spots of this paint sparkle. Fuchsite Genuine is different in that sparkle is all over. The whole colour shimmers and it is close to a pearlescent colour, rather like the duochrome or the iridescent colour by Daniel Smith but with more colour to it. I always paint the test sheets from dried paints and I have to admit this colour was a little harder to re-wet than other colours, so I definitely recommend pre-wetting this colour. Daniel Smith's website says, made from pure fuchsite, a mineral with mica-like characteristics, this colour creates a luminous pearly green shimmer. Soft, subtle, with a pearly green shimmer, Fuchsite Primatec watercolour is luminous and elegant. Made from pure fuchsite, a Russian mineral, this transparent mineral colour is great for layering delicate greens to add luster and dimension to your paintings. Try glazing this over a strong green to soften and enhance foliage or add it one subtle layer at a time to cool your study with a unique glow and non-traditional hue. It is a Series 2 colour, classified as excellent in light fastness, transparent, non-staining and non-granulating. We are back and this is Fuchsite Genuine. It is just sparkles everywhere and somebody commented that they were distracted by my overuse of the word sparkles but when colours have so much sparkle you're just gonna have to put up with me calling it sparkle because what else are we gonna call this? It is so super sparkly. It's like it's the kind of sparkle I imagine a princess's dress is to be having like layers and layers of organza of this shimmer happening and let's give you a much closer look at this shimmer and sparkle happening as you can see this is more like a metallic or pearlescent and very much a mica kind of sparkle the sparkles are much much smaller and it's dispersed more thoroughly it's in fact quite hard to pick out one sparkle out from the other it's just an overall thing that happens and so if you don't like sparkles then don't get this color because there's no getting away from how sparkly this color is and what's really interesting is here with the gauze where the gauze was has kind of collected all the micro so you can see all the sparkles this silvery light green color gathering up around the gauze and then you get the green color in the background and also around the edges of the gauze. So you can really see the separation between the color and the color of the sparkle. In terms of creating gradated washes, it's a very easy color to create the gradated washes with. The mass tone itself isn't very intense so you're starting from a mid-tone already and then creating the wash all the way through is quite easy. It's also very difficult to cauliflower these, so really, really easy paint to work with. Now let's take a look at opacity. This color is classified as transparent by Daniel Smith. We had this discussion before, I think, when we looked at kyanite. Because of the sparkle, I slightly struggle to call it transparent because the whole point of the transparency test is if you can see a deposit 
over the black line, then it's not transparent. And I definitely see a lot of sparkle over the black line. So even if the green is transparent, you're still gonna get a ton of deposit over the black line. In terms of lifting, it's classified as non-staining and I actually agree with it this time. It's very, very easy to lift this color. In terms of layering, I think you will have a easier time layering these because it doesn't have as much granulation. As the gauze tells you, the granulation happens from the mica and you definitely see an unevenness in the color when you layer the stone over each other. But it's definitely a much prettier texture than, say, the Blue Appetite Genuine that we had in the previous episode. Gauzing, we had a good look at that. It's a very interesting result. However, I don't know how much control you're going to have over this process of where the green is going to show up and where the mica lines are going to show up. In terms of salt, it actually worked really well where the salt had been collected all the mica. So all the areas where the salt was has a lot more mica sitting in it than the rest of the square. In terms of water bloom, it actually blooms really well. It's one of the few colors that we've seen in this series that does that. You get the nice feathering happening and you get to really see the mica showing through where the water was. In terms of color mixes, let's just remind you what colors I mixed the fuchsia with. These are the 12 colors I used in this test and this is the result of these colors mixed with the fuchsia. I have to say I love the palette that this color creates. It's soft, spring, princess because all the sparkles it is a really really lovely color to mix with because it's a tealy color its complement is going to be the vermilion and as you can see you get a perfect gray with this red flocculation happening and some overall sparkle happening it struggles a little bit with the permanent red because again it's close to the complement color so i probably wouldn't recommend you mixing the fuchsia with this color however with the rest of the 12 colors it's gorgeous i love this lime green but a soft lime green happening with the cadmium yellow light and really it's just the sparkles that this color adds it is gorgeous. And all down here with the pinks and purples and the blues and greens, it is Disney color. It is Disney princess, like Tinkerbell kind of clothes, shimmery, soft, very pretty colors. Now let's take a look at fuchsia with other colors. And fuchsia is a very unique color. Partly because it's the only mica color in the Primatech range, but I collected some soft greens and teals for comparison. And first we have the Kingman Green, which is a very flat, heavily granulating, no sparkle color. Then we have the Amazonite by Daniel Smith that we looked at in a earlier episode. And I watered it down to see if I can match its intensity with the fuchsia and you can see that the amazonite has a lot more blue than the fuchsia does then we have sleeping beauty and this is again a little bit more blue than the fuchsia's green then i tried viridian which is a lot closer in hue to the fuchsia but it's a very flat non-sparkling kind of color then i tried cobalt green which was way too green then the Holbein's Compost Green, which again is too much green, so I thought, okay, let's try Sennelier's Emerald Green, which is getting closer in the intensity, but too green. And then I tried Sennelier Viridian, and that again was too strong and too green. And then finally, I pulled up a duochrome color that Eve sent me called Oceanic, and as I said, because they're both micas, they have the same kind of shimmer, but the fuchsia has more color to it 
than the geochromes do. And certainly in comparing with Oceanic, the Oceanic's sparkle is a little bit more gold, whereas Fuchsite's one is a little bit more silver. I think that the Fuchsite is closest to more of like the geochrome colors, but it has a lot more body and color to them than the geochromes will have. However, if you have a wide range of dual chromes already in your collection, you might as well just add a little bit of green to one of the colors that are quite close to the fuchsite. But like me, if you are lacking in mica colors and you have more of the traditional range of colors, then this will be a good addition to have if you are looking for a sparkly, soft color to add to your collection. So that was Fuchsite Genuine. I really like this color. It's just so dreamy and soft and pretty. However, when it comes to adding to my palette, I don't think it will be going in my palette just because my palette consists of very bold colors and this will struggle a little bit, I think, being in there. And also because it's sparkly, I would have to really be careful about keeping it contained on the palette so that none of the other colors end up with a ton of sparkle, which is a headache on its own. However, if you do like to use sparkles and soft colors, then I think this will be a great addition to your palette. So what did you think of this color? Do let me know in the comments below. And if you are a big fan of Fuchsite and love using it, then please do let us know how and what you use this color for. If you like to give Primatic colors a go, but you're not ready to invest in a whole tube, then you might want to sign up to my Patreon dot cards for this month of October. It is going to be eight Primatic colors, Rhodonite, Purpurite, Sugilite, Kyanite, Mayan Blue, Blue Appetite, Fuchsite, and Jedite. As you can see, it is loads of paint for you to have a really good try at these colors. If you would like to receive this dot card, then do be sure to be signed up over on my Patreon on the appropriate tiers by 31st of October. There are lots of other rewards though over on my Patreon, so do check it out. It is patreon.com forward slash autocarno. Thank you so much for watching this video. If this video was useful to you, then please do give it a thumbs up. I think this is a fantastic color. Okay, I will see you in the next video. Bye!